Hey all you slayers out there, DTM Shadow Slayer here, and welcome to my trailer analysis for Kingdom Hearts 2.8 trailer, which was released at TGS. Now first off, I just want to apologise for this being so late, I've just been so busy getting ready for university and I am actually ill right now, so I just I didn't feel like doing a video for the last couple of days. But anyway, now that's out of the way, uh, I'm just going to get straight into this and see what I can spot, like see if I can spot any secrets or hidden details within the trailer. So to begin with, we see Sora, Kairi and Riku, that's young Sora, Kairi and Riku, playing on Destiny Islands. Now I would just like, now I would just like to say that I really, really like this scene. Just the fact that for the first time you get to see Destiny Islands in the new engine, which Square are working in and it looks freaking amazing. When they go to play in the ocean, you get to see these lighting effects, which are just pure gold. They are just really, really nice. And I just get instantly hyped up. The reason they are in their childhood right here is because, as you probably know, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep takes place 10 years before Sora starts on his journey in Kingdom Hearts 1. We also know that Aqua, Ben, and Terra all come into contact with Sora in the game at some point in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. We also know that 0.2 Birth by Sleep starts immediately after the original Birth by Sleep game. In the next scene, after the trailer pans of Sora, Riku, and Kairi playing, we get to see Aqua drifting towards Sora's heart. This stained glass platform which we see here is actually the physical embodiment of Sora's heart. Because all across the Kingdom Hearts series we get to see these sorts of types of platforms usually at the start of the game at some point. And this scene here is very similar to that of another opening of this, sorry, of another opening, the opening in the original Birth by Sleep game where we see Aqua drifting towards Ben's heart, or the platform which represents Ben's heart. However, in the 0.2 trailer, it's actually Sora's heart instead. We know that in Birth by Sleep, when Ven's heart was broken into pieces, uh, some pieces of it came to reside within, or a piece of it came to reside within Sora. Could this mean that Aqua is trying to contact Sora to release Ven's heart and wake him up? I guess we'll just have to wait and see when we play the game. Also, if we go all the way back to the Blank Points super secret ending of the original, like, original Birth by Sleep game, you can see Aqua having a conversation with Anson the Wise within the realm of darkness. During this conversation, Anson has told Aqua that there's a boy out there who will save everybody and wake up the sleeping hearts. Sleeping hearts possibly being Ven. When Aqua asked Anson who this is, he told her Sora. From this we can guess that Aqua will know who Sora is and how important that he actually is to saving the world. Uh, and how he is needed to save Ventus, which is the fact that he has his heart within him. Again, this relates to my theory that she may be trying to reach Sora, and when we see her diving into the heart, that I think pretty much confirms it, and that confirms why she was diving into his heart. But how she comes to dive into his heart, we don't actually know, so we'll just have to hopefully find out that in the game. In this next scene, we see Aqua, Terra, and Ventus standing in a grassy field, holding their wayfinders. However, we can't see what sort of world it is, but I can make an educated guess from that I would have to say it is the Land of Departure. Due to the fact that they all stand together in the Land of Departure, was, and that was pretty much the only time where they were all together, except for in the Keyblade Graveyard towards the end of the game, in Birth by Sleep. The scene then goes on to show Terra and Ven vanishing, and their wayfinders falling into darkness, along with them. This signifies that Aqua has lost her two friends, and 0.2 Breath of Sleep story is more or less about Aqua going through the realm of darkness, desperately trying to find a way to bring them back and save them. And after the Wayfinders fall into darkness, we actually see Ven and Terra's Wayfinders become what I've decided to call Dark Wayfinders, and they start flying in between the seats of the Organization 13. Uh, what could this mean? Could this mean that Ven and Terra are now going to be vessels of Xehanort's heart? We know that Terra is actually currently under control of Xehanort, so it is pretty obvious that he will be a secret of darkness, but could Ven's body currently contain, uh, which currently contains a, a fragmented version of his heart, become host to Xehanort's heart, with the fact that he is weak at the moment? The scene then moves on to see Aqua reaching out towards Terra and Ven, who are in fact Terranaut and what looks like actually a possessed version of Ben. Now this I was actually really confused on the trailer and I find this very interesting. If you look close at Ben's eyes, like really close, really hard to see in the trailer, you'll see that they are still blue. They are not the yellow eyes of Xehanort, 
which we see him have at the end of Birth of Sleep when he becomes one with Venetus. But he still has the same suit on that he had when he had become one with Venetus. The bird then turns to try her down. Terra and Zay Terra has Zaylon's Keyblade, and Ben actually has the, the Keyblades in the Kai Blade, uh, which is the counterpart to Kingdom Hearts. We then go on to see uh, Aqua find Ben in the Realm of Darkness asleep in Snow White Coffin. This is, of course, within the Dwarven Woodland, so it's cool to know that that world will be returning in 0 0.2. I think it's also quite fitting due to the fact that Ven is actually in a coma at the moment, like Snow White was in the film, after she bit into the poisonous apple from the Wicked, Cru from the Wicked Queen. Further on into the 0 0.2 segment, we can actually see Aqua talking to a living reflection of herself using the magic mirror. This conversation I found was quite confusing actually, as the mirror Aqua says, Only your heart is hollow enough to be a demon. How is Aqua a demon? I have no idea. Uh, Aqua then goes on to reply, That's not true! My heart is strong! I'll prove it! I don't really know what this means, but it could be an inner fight or an inner conflict with herself, as she then goes on to fight many versions of herself. So this looks like a pretty awesome boss fight, I must say. The show then just goes on to show some Dream Drop distance footage in HD and 60 frames per second, but there isn't really much else to say about that. After that, then, uh, we then see a conversation between the Master and Masters and Ira, aka Unicornus. Now, before we go into that, I just want to mention the black coat. There is a slight difference with theirs, like Luxus and the Master and Masters, than there is with the organization's coat. And that is the zipper. Yes, you heard that right, the zipper. It's different. Look at the image of Axel. It's just a regular zipper like you would get on a hoodie or a jacket or something. But Luxus and the Master Master Zipper look similar to that of the Keyblade, like I said before, the Kai Blade, uh, the counterpart. Now what could this mean? Could their plan to get their hands on the D Keyblade? Or maybe it's to unlock Kingdom Hearts? I guess we'll find out more in, of the, about that in back cover. Anyway, the Master Master says to Ira, you telling me that you think the world can be saved by just seven people? Our response to this is, We have to at least try. This is blatantly obvious that it is to do with the seven lights that will clash with the 13 darknesses. The only way that they could know about this, because it happens so many years in the future, is from the Terms of Prophecy, which we know all of the foretellers actually own. Or own one of them, anyway. Next we see our said talking to Ava, about forming an alliance. This, as we all know, and as Ava tells us, and tells I, and tells um, I said, it is forbidden for the unions to form alliances. And that is how things worked at that time, so they just weren't allowed to work together. Now, what I found really strange is that I said told her three of us should form an alliance. I looked at the two trailers for what we have for 0 0.2 at the moment, and I've come to think that that other person is Envy. As it would seem that Ruler only wants to uh, stick to himself, due to the fact that he said in the trailer, trust no one but yourself. And Ira seems to be on sort of almost equal terms with Luxio and the Master Masters, due to the fact that he's speaking so casually to them. Next, we return to 0 0.2, and we get to see Aqua sliding down a slope which appears to be in the mine from the Dwarven Woodlands, but this one is all ripped up and chewed away by the darkness. After that we see a load of freaking trippy ass pillars, which when we strike certain ones, it just turns upside down, which is so, so weird. It really memorizes a little bit when I keep watching it. Could this be within the magic mirror, as is the two uh, versions, the upside down one and the normal one, is mirroring itself? And maybe we have to change these pillars to get through a mirror maze or something. Later on we see another cutscene from 0 0.2, where Aqua is falling into darkness and she says, Finally I can be one with the darkness, as if she has given up. Then Mickey comes in to save the day and asks Aqua if she is okay. Now if you look really close, you can see Mickey is wearing his Chain of Memories outfit. Now we know that that time works differently in the realm of darkness. <clears throat> so that 
it, it, like, it works differently in the realm of darkness to that of the normal realm. So this is proof that uh, as the scene takes place just before Chain of Memories, or maybe just after, that is obviously a long time after Birth by Sleep, due to the fact that Sora at this point is 14 years old. Now, obviously Mickey knew about Up all this time, so why has he not tried to save her until now? There has to be some reason behind this, which I hope we will find out later on in the game. And finally, in the last scene of the trailer, we get to see... <coughs> sorry. We get to see a lot of dark sides firing orbs into a bigger dark orb. What could they be doing? Could they be planning like a massive attack on uh, this world, which is being chewed up by the darkness? And this world actually looks like the Enchanted Dominion, because if you look closer in the corners of the background, you can see thorns and a castle. But that's really all there is to say about this trailer. This is all I could find from it. I couldn't concentrate very well because, like I said, I'm ill, so I'm sorry if it wasn't as good as it could have been. But regardless, I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you leave like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next chapter.